Now, all workers are allowed back to the office, but employers are still being urged to continue offering flexible work arrangements as a permanent feature. In a joint statement, the Manpower Ministry, Labour Movement and the Singapore National Employers Federation said that these arrangements help staff achieve better work-life harmony and become more productive. Employers benefit too from talent attraction and retention. For more, Mr. Sim Guan, Gim Guan, Executive Director from the Singapore National Employers Federation, joins us live. Uh, Mr. Sim, thanks very much. Uh, we're talking about flexible arrangements here. Give us a sense of what the support is like among uh, your member companies for such flexible work arrangements. So maybe uh, as a consequence of the pandemic, actually we saw that former former, former FWAs uh, have rose from 53% in 2019 to 78% in 2020. And one point I would like to highlight is that flexible arrangements include not just flexible place, uh, which is what we see with a work from home arrangement, but also flexi load and uh, flexi time. So what we do believe is that many of the employers are, are a little bit concerned because they are not too sure how to implement. But one thing is clear. It is important for businesses to continue to look at how they can better support their employees to better manage their work life um, and achieve better work life harmony. Uh, through that process, uh, as you've indicated earlier, we do believe uh, that employees can be better engaged, can be more productive. And indeed, uh, employers can also gain access uh, to otherwise uh, a segment of the workforce that may not be able to join uh, the economy. So, for example, those with uh, caregiving arrangements or those who are not able to work on a full-time basis. Do you see this as a fundamental shift uh, or a pivot point for the Singapore workplace? I mean, we've, we've had flexible work arrangements even before the pandemic. Now, even as things start to relax further, we're saying, you know what, give those flexible work arrangements where possible. Is this a start of something that has a bit more permanence moving forward? Actually, I don't see this as a very radical shift. Uh, and in fact, uh, it is not just in Singapore, but in all uh, parts of the world, you find that this is something that is uh, adopted to a greater measure uh, by employers. And certainly something that I think many employees uh, do look forward to. And with that, uh, it is therefore important for employers to continue to engage their employees to then discuss uh, what kind of flexible work arrangements will actually work for them even as it will work for the business. We do recognize that in different work settings uh, and for different job roles, uh, the extent to which flexible arrangements can be implemented will differ. And so this is a conversation that employers need to have on a continual basis with their employees. And I think through that process, uh, it is possible to find a good balance, uh, both in terms of meeting business needs as well as helping the employees uh, meet their work-life harmony uh, objectives. Right. In terms of what you say there, meeting the business needs, uh, you know, in the engagements that you've had with your member companies, has that ever been something that stood out strongly? Um, you know, some companies perhaps saying that, hey, you know, I, I need to make sure that I meet my bottom lines and I can only do so with employees in the workplace. So, indeed, it's true that in some cases, um, the work do require uh, employees to be at the workplace. So, in situations like this, uh, it is possible for companies to consider, for example, job redesign. So, that it is possible to extend some form of flexible arrangements uh, to staff that would otherwise be required to be at the workplace most of the time. So, example, of course, is uh, using technology. Uh, and there are different kinds of grants that the government do provide uh, to support uh, companies even as they are either implementing uh, job, re re job redesign or implementing technological solutions to better support staff. So I will certainly welcome uh, employers to reach out to uh, SMEF uh, or the respective uh, uh, TACs, uh, Trade Associations and Chambers, uh, to look at the kind of support uh, that they can leverage on to implement such measures. Mm. And in spite of you know, uh, this push for flexi work arrangements, the reality is uh, that we now can have you know, 100% of staff uh, back in the office. Um, 
But that being said, you know, the ministers earlier also mentioned that, you know, we have to be ready for flare-ups from time to time. How ready do you think that workplaces are, you know, in, in stemming potential outbreaks? Should they indeed flare up in the office? Okay. So because of the last two years, I believe that many companies have already started to look at how they can prepare uh, themselves uh, for a potential outbreak, uh, putting in place a business continuity plan. So I would say that we are in a much better position. Uh, companies should be able to very quickly uh, put in place uh, measures, uh, you know, for example, team A, team B, so as to ensure that business will continue even if there may be a case. Uh, of course, even with the current relaxation, uh, there are measures that we encourage both companies as well as employees to continue to adopt. So one example is if you are unwell, you know, please continue to go and see a doctor. And if you are unwell, don't come back to the workplace. And for those who are out in the community, for example, if you are unwell, I hope that the habit of wearing a mask will continue. So personal responsibility, personal hygiene will certainly go a long way towards uh, ensuring that even if there is a potential second wave, uh, the consequence will be significantly reduced. All right, Mr. Sim, thank you very much for those in insights. We've been speaking there with Mr. Sim Gim Guan. He's the Executive Director from the Singapore National Employers Federation.